For the first time, many schools across East Texas are offering both virtual and in-person learning. How that's implemented at each school looks a little different. Tonight in Lessons Learned, our Dana Huey finds out from parents how the school year is going so far. You know, it depends on who you talk to. For some, remote learning this fall has been a good experience. Actually, better than expected and better executed than in the spring. For others, they feel like schools should be further along in the process to seamlessly integrate virtual learners. He felt like he was being ignored. Um, you know, he would say things like, I'm not gonna bother raising my hand. They're, you know, they're not even gonna call on me. He didn't feel like part of the classroom. It's better. Um, it's more structured. So I think they're doing really well. Um, she has seven different Microsoft Teams, one for each class. Logging on to learn. It's become the new norm for many East Texas students, like Avery Hassel. Avery, how do you think it's going? It's going really good. Like, I, I really like it. Class has been back in session for almost a month at many East Texas schools. I just didn't feel like it was safe for her to go to school. Not safe enough, for sure. Um, Avery had a bout of pneumonia when she was 13, and she was in the ICU for four days, and so her lungs are weaker because of it, and it just wasn't worth the risk with the COVID-19. This would have been Avery's first year on campus at Jacksonville High School. Um, I cried, I'm not gonna lie. Um, in my memories on Facebook, the first day of school always pops up, and the first day of pre-K happened to be the same as this year, first day of school. And I was like, well, I never imagined this is what our first day of high school would look like, but it is what it is. So we took our first day of school picture with a laptop and a mask on. I also talked with parents in White House and Nacogdoches about how they're feeling about distance learning this time around, now that schools have had the summer to prepare. What we're seeing now is a, a stark contrast to what we had back then. In my opinion, I think a lack of planning on the side of the administration. I don't blame the teachers. They're doing the best they can. It isn't what Jack Chandler and his son expected, who attends a charter school in Nacogdoches. We initially chose um, synchronous. It was basically he sits in front of the computer and the video of a class is streamed live for him to observe. Um, after. I think it might, I don't even think it was two weeks, we decided to go asynchronous because, again, no schedule, very, very poor audio and video quality. We could hardly understand most of what was going on. Chandler wanted to make sure his son had some sense of normalcy, so he set up a classroom inside their home. We've got five shelves of books, another shelf full of projects and print offs, colors and crayons, a scissor station. Uh, I have a, a, a separate desk, kind of like a teacher's desk. I don't at all think I'm a teacher, but I do have a desk I set up with a PC so I can sit over there and try to not interfere while he uh, he sits and does his lessons. But he's got a pencil sharpener in here. We said the Pledge of Allegiance to the, the American flag and the Texas flag every morning. And so I wanted to replicate that learning environment as closely as I could and hopefully that's going to be something he'll benefit from. What we're hearing from local districts, roughly one fourth to a third of parents around East Texas chose to give learning online another shot for their children. Adriana Pitts is one of those moms. Last year, the teachers kind of, I mean, you can't blame them. They had, you know, not that much amount of time to put things together. This time around, it's more dedicated to, you know, the teaks, the, the state you know, lessons that they need to know. Her four children attend school in White House. They have Google Meets, so everything's through Google this year. And so they have specific times on when the teacher, you know, wants the class or the virtual learners to log in and, you know, talk about a lesson. Um, other teachers will record themselves and then like upload it to the Google website, the Google Classroom, and then but the, the student has to participate and they have to make sure that they let the teacher know that they watch the video in order to get a participation grade. Pitts also feels like the teachers are available to her and the children. We have, you know, email and text messages that I can contact with them. And they're actually pretty fast about communication with the kids. And so the kids, there's a way for the kids to even, you know, message the teacher like in a chat in Google. And they're, they 
seem to, you know, go back and forth, even if it's just casual conversation. So the teachers are, you know, real interactive when it comes to the kids. So this way it's, you know, it's more personal. But it's still a big commitment from parents who chose virtual learning, especially when you have elementary school kids. It, it takes a lot of me to make sure that they are, you know, on task. Um, I'm just grateful that I don't have a, you know, a full-time job on top of this because I've heard other parents do and you know I, I get to spend time at home to help them you know follow along with their courses and make sure they're doing the right thing and keeping them on task but it, it does take a lot you know because you know they're you know I have four of them so they're in different grades and they have different opinions on learning from home they're divided um, two of them don't like it because they miss, you know, the social interaction with their friends. Another reason why the two don't like it is because, you know, they they have trouble, you know, on the computer focusing. And so it makes it harder. They get frustrated and, you know, staring at a screen for so long. The other two like it, you know, based on the fact that it's easier. It's more one-on-one, -on -one. Um, you know, they, they they enjoy being on, you know, the tablets or computers. We've heard a lot over the last few months about connectivity issues due to poor broadband infrastructure across the state. And then I went and bought a MiFi jetpack so that she could have stronger internet at home to do her assignments. We live about 12 miles outside of Jacksonville, and so Wi-Fi is not really an option here unless we want satellite, and even then it's spotty. So just using our phones and using our mobile hotspots is better. Even with the internet issues, the Hassles hope this isn't the end of remote learning, but the future. That's a great experience. We love it. And if it's an option next year, we'll do it next year. Through all of this, what has been your biggest lessons learned um, for you and your family and for your son? Don't rely on someone else to focus on your kid's education. As a parent, it's your number one responsibility to keep your kids safe and after that, making sure they're a well-rounded person is, is one of the biggest jobs of parents, uh, one of the biggest responsibilities that a parent has. And so focusing on his education, making sure that he's got the tools he needs to be successful in the future is, is my highest priority. The coronavirus forced us all, parents and educators, to learn some tough lessons when it comes to the most effective way to reach each and every student. We've got you covered, East Texas. Dana Huey, CBS 19. Dana also talked with school leaders, teachers, and the Texas Education Agency on virtual learning and connectivity. So stay tuned for that in the weeks ahead. In the meantime, if you have a question or lessons learned story idea, email her at education at cbs19.tv.